All right, we're going to be looking at another example with chi-squared today. Uh, this example is different, and I'll be sure to point out why this example is different. But let's just dive right into our story problem. Medical researchers enlisted 90 subjects for an experiment comparing treatments for depression. The subjects were randomly divided, oh, isn't that good, good experimental design, randomly divided, into three groups and given pills to take for a period of three months. Unknown to them, just a quick reminder, unknown, we call that blind, one group received a placebo, the second group the natural, uh, that, like an herb remedy, St. John's wort, and the third group the prescription drug Posrex. After six months, psychologists and physicians who did not know which treatment each person received, oh, they also did not know, uh, we call that double blind, they evaluated the subjects to see if their depression had returned. Is there a difference? So on the next slide, I'm going to show you the results. But again, I just I want to summarize. We've got three groups, and we're comparing three things, a placebo, St. John's wort, and Posrex. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data. All right, so here in the table is our data. You'll notice we had our three groups, placebo, St. John's wort, and Posrex. And then they've divided it into two groups. Uh, the physicians and uh, psychiatrists evaluated the depression returned after the six months, or they decided there was no sign of depression. The reason I'm calling this a different kind of chi-square test is because I don't have just one variable color. I have two variables. I have their diagnosis and their original treatment. Two variables. So we're still going to use our chi-square test, but this is a new kind. It's called homogeneity. It's the name of the test. In particular, we're going to be testing to see if the percentages are the same for all the groups. And I'll point that out as we're going along. So you might imagine that our steps will be similar. So in step one, we're going to be writing the hypotheses. Step, uh, excuse me, the null hypothesis is going to be the status quo. The rate of recurrence is the same for all three treatments. Uh, this is a little strange of wording. It sounds very textbooky. Rate of recurrence. That just means the percent who had depression return. So if you think about it, rate, right, percent of recurrence, meaning it came back. So if there's nothing going on, if the placebo and the herb and the prescription drug all work the same amount, right, think of it as like they're equal, that's our null hypothesis, that means the percent who have depression come back is going to be the same for every group. Alternatively, The rate of recurrence differs for some treatments. Now, I'm not going to point out which one I think is working the best. I'm just going to note that something is different. That's the big theme with chi-square. We're testing to see if something is different. Is there a difference? So notice again that I'm using words to describe my hypotheses. So let's check out step two. The conditions that we find in step two will be the same that we discussed with our goodness of fit test. So the first condition, I'll start there, we're checking to see if it's random. So I might go back and glance through my story problem. Uh, I actually underlined it when we were there. The treatments were assigned randomly. So we do have an element of random. So just jot down treatments. assigned randomly. That's good. Yeah, that says randomly. The second condition, if you recall, was something about the expected counts needed to be bigger than five. Now, last time when we did our goodness of fit, we had a percentage so we could calculate these expected. Now all we have is this table. So what I've done is I actually expanded this table to include the totals uh, in both directions. So we have totals. And I'm going to use a little bit of reasoning here so that 
if nothing is going on and my percentages are equally distributed, what would that mean? Well, the first thing I notice is that the placebo, St. John's wort, and Posrex all have 30 people. So you could think of this in terms of a third, a third, and a third. We've distributed it equally. In total, there were 60 people who had depression return. I want to split that 60 people into third, third, third. That means there would be 20, 20, 20. All right, people with no depression, there were 30 total, and I want to split that equally into the three uh, categories. So it would be 10, 10, 10. Those are my expected counts. Notice they're all bigger than five. Now I am well aware that some of you are not going to like that logic. So if you need um, maybe something a little more solid to calculate, there's actually a formula for finding the expected counts. It's a, a little strange, a little long, but it works. Uh, this will not be available on your AP formula guide, so if you find that this formula works better for you, it's just something that you're going to have to remember. To find the expected value, we're going to take the row total, we're going to multiply it by the column total, and we're going to divide it by that like grand total. So uh, here's a nice blank table for us to look at. So if I want to work on, let's say this first cell, this first box, I'm going to look at the row total. So I go to the end of the row to find the total, that's 60, times my column total, so that's at the bottom, 30. And I divide that by the grand total. That's this guy in the corner. Everybody added together, 90. And if I put that in my calculator, 60 times 30 divided by 90, I'm going to find that it's 20, exactly what we got uh, the first time around. We'll do one more. I'll put it in a different color. Let's say I want to figure out, oh, this one, this cell. We'll do it in blue. I'm going to take the row total. That's this one at the end. 30 times the column total, go down, that's 30, divided by the grand total, the one in the corner, that's 90. And if we put that in our calculator, we get 10. So just another way to find those expected counts, um, especially when we don't have equal numbers down here. This formula might be a little bit easier for you, so you can remember that. All right, now that we have our, our conditions met, let's go ahead and move on to the mechanics. For this particular example, I'm going to show you the bare minimum of what's needed and then how to get that on the calculator. Now certainly, you could do each of these cells uh, individually and calculate the chi-square. You have your expected counts. They're here. 20, 20, 20, 10, 10, 10, and if we glance back up, we had our original data, so we have observed here and expected here. I know you could do each and every one of those. There's, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six cells. You could do six chi-squares, add them together, um, but I'll show you, again, bare minimum what's needed if you want to use your calculator. So I do want to make sure that AP knows that I understand how the chi-square formula works. So I'm going to go ahead and write chi-square equals, and I'm going to do the first two components, uh, the first two fractions. So I'm going to show the first two fractions to kind of establish that I understand the formula. So chi-square is equal to, I'm going to find the observed. So I'm just going to look back at my slides, and I observe that that first corner box uh, was 24 people. Minus the expected count, I look at my expected chart and I look in that same top corner, it was 20, and I square that and divide by the expected. 
Now I know I'm writing real large here, but uh, hopefully you can get the idea. I then would do the next one. Plus, I'm showing AP that I understand that the chi-square formula says that I add things together. So I'll go to my next one. I'm going to go straight across. So I had 22 was my observed minus my expected of 20. I square that and I divide it by the expected. And then I'm going to write plus again telling AP I know there's more and then I'm just going to do dot 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 it keeps going and then I'll write my final answer and I'm going to get that using the calculator alright you would have noticed from the math results uh, that our degrees of freedom was 2. I just want to be real clear about where that came from. This one's a little bit different. So here's our formula for degrees of freedom. This time it has to be different because we have rows and columns. We have two different variables. So if I want to calculate the degrees of freedom for our example, then take the number of rows. Uh, we had two rows. Either they got depression again or they did not. So that's two rows. Formula says to subtract 1. And I multiply that by the number of columns. We had three columns for our three treatments, minus one. So what I really have here is one times two, which is two. That's where they got that degrees of freedom of two. All right, so let's move on to our conclusion. Uh, again, I'd probably jot in here an alpha level. Uh, I'm going to pick 0 0.05. That's very common. The p-value that we found using our calculator was 0 0.014. Uh, that's smaller than alpha, so we're going to reject. And then notice I'm saying the reason I'm rejecting is because my p-value is smaller than alpha. That means there is evidence that the rate of recurrence is different for some treatments. Uh, again, remember when I say rate of recurrence, I mean the percent of people whose depression is coming back or not coming back. So really, this tells me that there is a difference. There is a difference between those three things. There is a difference between taking a placebo, taking St. John's wort, and taking a prescription. And again, this was chi-square test of homogeneity. Homo meaning the same.